afternoon, everyone. Um, and good day to you all. Today we'll be looking at, um, we are welcome to the MT232 classes, class, uh, where we talk about elementary differential equation. Today we'll be looking at uh, Bernoulli, Riccati, and Clairaut equation and see how we can use them or this method to solve some of the differential equation we have. So let me quickly share my screen, then we shoot from there. If you have any question, don't hesitate to pause me. Just feel free to ask a question. Then from then we can continue. Thank you guys. Okay, we have Rakati equation. I will start from Belluni. Let's start from Belluni equation. We have Bernoulli differential equation. But the only differential equation is of we have the nature uh, of the the Bernoulli differential equation is the y where you have the y the x plus p of x y equals to f of x and y of y raised to power n. In this case, we said let this one equals to equation one. Then we said let's W equals to y raised to the power one minus n. Y equals to y raised to the power two. Then we can differentiate the w. The w, the x will be one minus n, then y raised to the power minus n, the y the x, implicit function. We use implicit function to differentiate y with respect to x, the w with respect to x. So at the end of that, you add what we call um, the y, the x, depending on what you are asked to solve. So uh, then we move on from there. After we have this, then we can now resolve this, make the y the x subject of formula. So if you make the y subject of the y the x subject of formula, what are we going to have in this case? So we are going to have what we call it's going to be the y the x will now be equals to one minus n one minus n raised to the power minus one, then y raised to the power n, the w, the x. So now that we have, if you check equation one in your equation one, you have the y, the x. That's why we make the y, the x, the subject of formula here and take other one to cross to the other side then we have this. So we can now go ahead and substitute our our y. Our yes, we can we can now introduce it back to the equation one. So it's going to be then our equation one becomes. So let's see where we have the y the x. So it's going to be the w, the x, into one minus n raised to power minus one, y raised to power n, plus p of x, y equals to f of x, y raised to power n. So we can divide, we can divide through by y raised to power n. So when you divide through by y raised to power n, what do we have? Divide true by y raised to power n. So we have 
the W dx into one minus n raised to power one, y raised to power n. So plus divided by y raised to power n, p of x, y, y raised to power n equals to f of x, y raised to power n, and y raised to power n. So when you have each of them to be raised to power n, what do we have to be divided by y raised to power n? So we can now resolve into y raised to power n here cross out this. This one also cross out. But this cannot be crossed out because you know that y raised to power n is not the same thing as y. So what we need to do is to take it up. Remember the law of indices. So in this case now, we have the W dx into 1 minus n plus P of x y raised to power 1 minus n equals to f of x. So since we have equals to f of x, this is pretty simple for us to solve. How do we solve this? Remember y raised to power n is the same thing as w from up. That's why we said let y equals to this particular one. So I can replace it by saying the w dx into one minus n raised to power n plus p of x w equals to f of x. Since w is the same thing as y raised to power one minus n. So take note of that. Then I can now go ahead, I need my dw alone. I can multiply, I can multiply through by one minus n. Multiply through by one minus n for us to eliminate this power. So we have w, the x. This will cancel this. So plus p of x, or you can just say 1 minus n, 1 minus n, p of x, w, equals to 1 minus n, f of x. Now that we have this, it is pretty simple for us to solve any time I tell you this solve for. You can easily solve for your W in this case. Anywhere you see W, you can easily solve for it. So, uh, so let's now look at the, uh, the main thing. We can solve for So you can see it's a linear in W, but you can also solve for W to substitute for your answer. You can solve for W. So it's a linear equation now in this format. Then we can move ahead and look at it. Let's look at the example. Example one says, when you have a question of this nature in your question, the Y, the X, minus y equals to exponential x, y raised to power two, equation one. Let's say equation two, or let's say equation star, so that you won't mess it up. Now, y raised to power two. Don't forget the original equations that we started from. The, in this case now, we started from, we said, for us to solve this problem, we have remember the general equation for it. The general equation is, is up here. The y, the x plus p of x, y equals to f of x, y raised to power n. 
So it's the same general equation we're going to write. And from that we know. So it's going to be the y, the x, plus p of x, y, equals to f of x, y raised to power x. Now, now that we have this, the question is, how do we resolve this matter? We said, let's w equals to what? What do you think? We said, let w equals to? Remember, we said, the other time we said y raised to power n minus, no, sorry, one minus n. We said one minus n. And if you look at our y, y minus n, uh, one minus n means because we have the highest power here is to be the highest power here that we are dealing with is what? Is n for the general equation. But what is the highest power of n in this particular equation we are given? You discover it's true. So it's the same thing. We are going to put it this way that is going to imply y1 minus 2. At the end of the day, we have y raised to the power minus 1. So we let, meaning, W equals to y raised to the power minus one because the highest power of y there is two. So then we can proceed by differentiating our w with respect to x using implicit function. So if we do, if you proceed like that, what are the things we need to do is it's just to pick it from here. We say we say it here. We said the w, the x will be what? The w, the x will be minus, remember when you are differentiating raised to the power minus one, it's minus y raised to the power minus two. Dy, the x, because of implicit, you did the implicit function, differentiation when you are, because of implicit function. Now, we have idea of what we are doing now. We can now make our dy dx subject of formula. How do we make dy dx subject of formula? In this case now, we have to be careful in order to do that. So we have this, we need dy dx. So the first thing we need to first of all do for us to make dy dx subject of formula, multiply, we multiply, both sides by negative y raised to power two. Negative y raised to power two. So it's going to be minus y squared, the y, the adults, the w, the x equals to, remember this is minus into, let's say minus y squared is into minus one all over y squared. So that's the meaning of this, dy, the x. So you have to be careful when you are solving this. You must be able to, careful with the sign, and with the range, and uh, with the division, or with the way the indices play out there. Minus cancel minus. Y raised to power two cancel Y raised to power two. So in this case now, we have our dy, the x, to be equals to negative Y squared, the W over the x. the W over the X. So now that we have this, I can go back to my equation star. 
I have the y, the x in my equation star. I can substitute the y, the x that I have now into my equation star. So putting the y, the s into equation star, it becomes, so let's see what it becomes from here. So we have it to be, Just substitute it there. So we are going to have it to be minus y square, the w, the x from our equation. Equation star will become minus y, minus y equals to exponential, exponential equals to exponential x, y squared. So when you have this, what do we need to do? We can divide both sides by negative two. Divide both sides by minus y squared. So at the end of the day, I have minus y squared here, the w, the x, so this divided by minus y squared. Minus y divided by minus y squared equals to exponential x y squared divided by minus y squared. So you agree with me that this go with this. So minus cancel minus also this is this one go with this. Minus turns to plus here. So we have the W, the X, plus one over Y equals to minus exponential S because this will have canceled this. So at the end of the day, we have this. Now, don't forget this is the same thing as W of dx plus y is power minus one equals to expo minus exponential x. So how do we resolve this? Remember, y is to power minus one is the same thing as W, the one we discover after we let. Look at it. It's the same thing as this. So since it's the same thing like this, we can now substitute, go back, you said, you replace y raised to the power this, y raised to the power minus one to be equals to the w. So you have the x plus w equals to minus exponential x. Now, what do we do? At this point, we can use, using integrating factor, we can use integrating factor. We did that earlier in this course. So we can, from the previous video, you can watch, you will see all of them. Uh, so using integrating factor approach. So we have, this is a linear equation. So, we have, what do we have? So, integrating factor in this case is what? It's pretty simple. I said, let's say IF, which is integrating factor, which implies, let's say the rho equals to exponential integrating factor. Let's see, what is our integrating factor in this case? Is the x, because what do we do? at this point. All we need to do is from here, we just say we have, because it's one, it's, one is here, it's supposed to be, okay, let me put this one so that you can see, let's say it's one, the X. So, so by the time we integrate this, what do we have? We still have exponential X, meaning that 
When you integrate, our exponential factor is ex w raised to power one equals to minus So equals to minus exponential 2x. By the time you take the factor of what we are doing, take this one to the other side, you have it. So when you now integrate both sides, remember we are to integrate E of x, w, where you integrate it, the prime will disappear. At the end of the day, you integrate both sides. This will turn to minus 1 all over 2 exponential what? Exponential 2x plus c. So, then we know the w. The W is y raised to power minus 1. Let's substitute it back. We have e raised to power x, y raised to power minus 1, equals to minus So minus, what do we have? We have minus 1 all over 2 exponential. 2s plus c. Then let's make y subject of formula. When you make y subject of formula, what do we have? We divide both sides by e raised to the power x. So when you divide both sides by e raised to the power x, this cancel this. We have y raised to the power this. Minus 1 equals to minus 1 all over 2 exponential. 2s multiplied by exponential minus x. So we have plus exponential c exponential minus x. But what do we do from here? What we need to do is very simple. Just make we only need y. So at this point that we need y, what do we do? We can match all the x together by saying y raised to power minus one equals to minus one all over two exponential two s minus x, right, plus, plus c. Because constant multiplied by exponential is still constant, plus c. Then we have it to be, 1 all over y equals to minus 1 over 2 exponential x plus c. So in this case now, when you find the inverse of this y, what do we have? Make y subject of formula all alone. So we are going to have, that is, is going to be y equals to 1 all over minus 1 all over 2 exponential x plus c or plus c exponential minus x, depending on individual. Some can still put it this way. Some can still put it there. But you still always have it at the back of your mind that everything I'm still doing here is still a constant. So any question on that? So we proceed to another type of method of solving this problem. We call it a Rakati equation. The Rakati equation Rakati equation. The first one is Bernoulli Rakati differential equation. Let me put it this way. Rakati differential. Equation. 
equation. So, Riccati equation is of the nature of the equation look like this, the y, the x equals to a of x, y squared plus b of x, y plus c of x. So on the Riccati equation, we let, for us to solve the z, let y equals to y1 plus 1 all over v, where v is equals to v of x v of x and uh, y1 is equals to particular solution. Particular solution. So let's call this one equation Roman figure one. We want equation from Roman figure one. What do we have? We can differentiate our y with respect to x. So let's differentiate it. We have it. The y, the x, will be equals to the y1 over the x. Now, this is raised to power. It turns to minus 1 all over v squared dv over the x. Remember, implicit function, the way I explained to us the other time. So we can proceed by solving the problem. All we need to do is go to your, let's call this one equation one. And uh, okay, probably I should call this one equation two so that it will follow the same order. So we need to substitute to rewrite our equation. Now we know where we are going. Don't forget the y, the x from equation one, we can replace this with the y, the x. Replace this one with the y, the x. We have the y, the x to be equal to equation one. Let's replace them and see what we have. Okay, let's go ahead. So when you replace them, you have it to be, let's put it there, a of x, y squared, plus b of x, y plus c of x, equals to So, so we turn the y the, the y one also we turn it to the same thing. We know it, we substitute that equation one also into it, but you change y to y one. So it's going to be a of x y one squared plus b of x y one. Then plus C of X. Then minus one over V squared DV DX. So we can collate the like terms, those with the power of X squared, we can collate them together. How do we do that? It's pretty simple. Let's look at it. We have one here, we have another one here, then which one again has the power of squared? Yes, we can say we have this. All the A's together. Are we there please? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Okay, let's move on. So we add A into Y1. That is, let's move, okay, probably we need to move everything back to the other side so that we can have a true picture of what we're actually doing. So, or we leave it the way it is, I will proceed like that. But don't forget here, y square is equal to something. We already have y. We have y to be this. So, then what is going to be y square? y square will now replace y, y square with y1 plus one all over V, all squared. Plus B, in terms of everything, Y1 plus one all over V, then plus C equals to A Y squared one plus B Y one, plus C minus one all over V square dV dS. Now that we have one all over V square dV dX, how do we expand? We need to expand them one after the other. Yes, Idris? Yes, sir. It's as if we have eliminated X. Eliminated what? X, X. So, from the expression. No, if we are not eliminating the X, you know, we, uh, X in that term is just a kind of, with respect to X. We are just saying, this also variable is with respect to X. It's not that X is standing alone. No, we only have A, B, C, and one V. Right. Focus on. Uh -huh. So on it's like, I, I give you, if I said, uh, two, uh, if I said, uh, let's say y, let's say y of x is equal to three. Are you getting it one? So I'm just depicting in them. Okay, at this point, what is x? At this point, what is y? That's the meaning of it. So everything is still in terms of x. That's why you can see us in differentiating with respect to x here. Am I answer that? No. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's move on. If you expand this, what do you have? If you expand it critically, you will have a of y squared one plus two y y one over B, plus one over what is the market plus one over v squared right so we now substitute the one of b we have the b as a o y1 plus 1 all over v plus c. Then everything equals to we can now write this a y squared 1 plus b y1 plus c minus 1 all over v square dv dx. Now if you open the bracket, let's see what we have. Which one cross out, which one remain at the end of the day. So let's open the brackets one after the other. Let's distribute A. So when you distribute A, what do we have? We have it this AY square one plus two A Y one B 
plus a over v squared plus b y1 plus b over v plus c equals to a square one plus b y1 plus c minus one over v squared dv dx. So you discover that some element cross out like C, C cross out, C go out from here, B minus one also go out, A and go. Because when you transfer them, it returns to plus negative, right? That's why they cross out. So I don't need to be. So we can now write the remaining one out by saying, 2ay1 over v plus a v2 plus b v equals to negative 1 all over v square dv dx. dv dx. So what do we need to do in this case? We need to multiply both sides by v squared in order to get rid of all the v squared. Multiply both sides by v squared. If you multiply both sides by v squared, what do I have? I will have this. I will have. 2ay1 v squared over v squared over v. So plus a v squared over v squared plus b v squared over v equals to minus one all over v squared v squared dv dx. Now, what do we have? This go with this, remain one. This cross out. This go with this, remain one. Then this go with this. So at the end of the day, we have 2a y1 v plus a plus b v equals to minus dv dx, equals to minus dv dx. So what do we need to do in this case? So we can collate the like time, let all dv go with dv, let the constant go to the other constant. So we're going to have, in this case, if I take all this to the other side, remember I have A, let my A be here equals to, equals to minus dv dx. Take this one to the other side. It also minus 2A y1v. And this also turns to minus b, v. So by the time you multiply two by negative, you have it to be negative a equals to dv dx plus 2a y1 v plus b v. So we have a linear function differential equation. So V is common to them. I can rewrite it by saying dV dx is equal to, or uh, just say dV dx plus 2AY1 plus B, or by V, because V is common to this side, equals to minus A. So we have a linear equation. This is a linear. 
So we have linear differential equation, so which is solvable by integrating factor. So remember we learned about integrating factor earlier. If you miss the class, try and watch the previous video, you will see it there. So we have it in this case, the V, the X, plus P of QX, P of XV, let's call this one P of X, V equals to QX. Remember for integrating factor. And we all know for integrating factor, it is pretty simple. All we need to do is just to do our exponential. Using integrating factor. So all we need to do is to do exponential integral P of X, the X, multiplied by dV, the X, plus P of X, exponential integral of P of X, the X, equals to Q of X, exponential integral of P of X, the X. So I believe you can use integrating factor to get to the final root of this equation. Any question? So in this case, now, don't forget, when you are multiplying this one, it has a V here, which is equals to Q of X. Then when you, define, when you differentiate this side, this means D of X, that is, will be V, that is V, this is multiplication, exponential integral of integrative factor dx equals to q of x exponential integral factor. So what do we need to do? If you can find the solution, it is easier. What do we use as a p of x? We use this entire one as our p of x. Don't forget. You can resolve this one by saying my V is equals to integral of Q of X, exponential integral of P of X, dx over exponential integral of P of X, dx. Any question? Okay, let me quickly solve by the next one so that we can uh, call it a day and then we'll continue from the next class. Please, uh, guys, when are you guys writing the exam? For this course, is your timetable out? Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Go ahead. I can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Is your time it's only 12. It's only 12. 12 where? 12 of December, 2 p.m. Oh, that's good. Who is talking, please? My name is Comfort, everyone. Madam Comfort. This must be your first time or second time? Yeah, second time. So where have you been? Um, I went to for normal tutorial. So when I'm, when I'm in class, I'm only able to connect. And again, when I just listen to you. Oh. Sorry, let me just... So.
Let's quickly complete this question. So, so we have this problem. We said y, y1, y raised to, uh, y raised to power one. That is, y raised to power one means what? Anybody? What does it mean to you? Is the y the the the, uh, the y square the x? So it's going to no. It's not the y square. It's just the y the x. So okay. in this case now you still have the y the x, right? So you said we have the y the x plus two x y. equals to one plus x squared plus y squared. So what do we need to do in this case? Let's make the y the x subject of formula. We said, if you make the y the x subject of formula, what do we have? So we have it to be y, Yes. The y the x will be equals to y squared minus two y two x y plus s squared plus one. We'll call this one equation one for this problem. Where y one equals to s. Where one one equals to x. So if y1 equals to x, remember we have a general formula, general write-off. So if y1 equals to x, what is our a of x in this case? Remember the way we wrote it the other time is here. Remember, this is the general one, right? This is the general equation we have for a Cartier equation. So let's write it down. Can someone call it for me? At least you have it in your note now. Ax, right? Y squared, yes. Anybody? Or you guys are just watching the movie that I'm doing. You just have to write to x plus y plus b y plus c of x. Right. Now let's quickly write. So that's what I will use to extract the information from the equation one. So if I want to extract the information from equation one, now what's going to be my my a? This is coefficient of this, coefficient of this, and this. So coefficient of A of X is equal to what? One. Do you agree with me? Because we only have one as a coefficient here. We only have one here. So what is B of X? B of X is what? minus 2x, then what is our c of x? Is it, Our c of s is the same thing as what? The same thing as s squared plus 1. So don't forget that we said let y equals to we can say let y equals to x plus 1 over v. Remember we said it here. And if you look at the, from the initial equation we have, we add the other time, we said, here we said let y equals to y1 plus 1 over v. So from the general equation, now that we are solving the problem now, 
And we know our y is the same, is implies y equals to y1 plus 1 over v. Remember this. This is what we are using now. So and y1 is equals to x. Replace this place by x. So that's what I did. Then I can differentiate this. If I differentiate this, dy dx is equals to 1 minus 1 all over v squared dv over the x equation. I can call this one equation two. Okay, let me just rewrite it so that you won't it won't confuse you. I said dy the x is equal to one minus one all over v squared dv the x equation two. So now that I have this, but it's the same thing. You remember that my x, my x plus v raised to power one, I can replace it. I can put it somewhere, anywhere very close. That's where you see this one. That's where this one is coming out from. So, because when you differentiate this, this is what I differentiate. I differentiated this. That's where I get this. Let me explain it so that you understand better, which implies that I said I have y equals to s plus v raised to power of this. I'm just digress. So just to explain this. So if I now said the y, the x, what does it mean? The y, the s will give me, this one will give me one automatically when I differentiate it. Then let's say plus, but this is v. But I have to differentiate the v with respect to x, implicit function. Using implicit function. So meaning I would first of all, bring this one down, minus one, then, v raised to power minus two. Then I will now add the v, the x, because it's a fun, it's a implicit function. I'm, I'm using it to differentiate v with my x. So it's going to be the y, the x equals to one, minus times plus minus one, it doesn't have anything. Then I would now have it to be v minus two, the v, the x, the v, the x, which is lead to equation two that you are seeing. Equation two, we now said the y over the x equals to one minus one all over v squared, the v, the x. Have you seen the way I got equation two? So that's the way I got my equation two. So don't say, uh, where did you get this one? Is it the way we will write it in the exam? Yes, that's the way you will solve it. Okay, we can proceed by saying, so we have equation one and equation two. Equation one is what? Is this one. Equation two is this. So substitute, we can now substitute, equate your equation one and equation two to be together. So if you equate them, equate, equation one and two. So if I equate equation one and two, remember equation one is equal to what? The y, the x. And I'm already solved the y, the x to be in my equation two. So all I need to do is just to place them together. So equation one is y squared minus two x y plus x squared plus one equals to equation two, one minus one over v, right? One over v squared, dv, dx. We can call this one equation three. But don't forget, I know my y. My y substitute y equals to x plus one all over v into equation three. 
into equation three. So what do I have? So anywhere I see it, I will have what? X plus one all over V squared minus two of X into one X plus one all over V plus X squared minus one, uh, plus one equals to one minus one all over V squared dv dx. So I can go ahead and open the brackets. I believe you guys can solve this one from here. Can we solve it? Or you want me to finish it? Will we, will we try it, sir? So all you need to do is open the bracket of this. If you open the bracket, you have x squared plus 2x over v plus 1 all over v squared minus 2x squared minus 2x over v plus x squared plus 1 equals to 1 minus 1 over v squared dv dx. So by the time you cross it out, this will go. With some, we have two. We have x two. Uh, this is minus two s squared. We have s squared plus s squared, which is two. It will go with this. Then this will also go with this. We our one will also go with this one. So at the end of the day, you are left with one all over v squared equals to minus one all over v squared dv dx. When you multiply both sides with the v squared, what do we have? Multiply both sides with the v squared, you have it. v squared, in brackets, one all over v squared equals to v squared, in brackets, minus one all over v squared, dv dx. dv dx So this go with this, this go with this. At the end of the day, what do we have? We have one equals to minus dv dx. So when you cross multiply, you have dv dx equals to minus dv. Integrate both sides. We have what? x equals to minus v plus c. So we have V equals to minus X plus C. So don't forget we know our Y. Our Y initially is what? Y equals to X plus one all over minus X plus C. So that's our V, right? We have to replace this into V. So then, it simply means that y equals to x plus minus minus x plus c raised to the power of minus one. That would be your solution. So just take notes. Look at the past question. Look at where they talk about Rakatian equation. Try as lay your hands on it and solve them as many as you can solve, make sure you solve them. So you can also take your time by solving this one. Just go and solve this, solve y prime plus y squared equals to one plus s squared, where your y one is equal to x is a solution like I did. So you can use it to solve this, use this method to solve this. Any question? <laughs>